things did not start as I expected. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to week two of Monthly Mayhem. This is the OMG 63 challenge where we're taking this TRX-6 AMG 63 and turning it into a top speed machine. This week, I've done a bunch of modifications already, and then we got into testing. First, let's go over the modifications that I've tackled so far. The first thing that I did was the portal delete. We got rid of the portals throughout the vehicle. That is mainly to help with gearing. People had some ideas of like trying to flip the portals and I, I don't think that that's, it's just not the right move or the right idea. And the gear, getting rid of the gearing is one of the biggest things that needed to be accomplished. So the portals needed to go to really try and bring this thing to the absolute highest speed that we can. The next thing that I did was after installing that, we installed the overdrive gears in all of the axles. So at this time, I've had all of these axles out and completely disassembled. While I had all of those gear sets out, I did take the chance when I installed the new ones to install some Swepco Molly grease. The, it's a high temp grease used in full size axles. As I talked about in the first one, we did need four overdrive gear sets so that we could have enough pinions to do all of the axles. And then after that, we dug into the electronic side. Now, Installing that VXL 8S and the 540XL motor took a little bit of fiddling with, mostly the motor side though. So, so I removed the old Titan motor first and then bolted up that 540XL to the stock motor plate. And then test fitting it, some clearance issues were immediately noticed. The issue was the servo mount. Now the XL motor, there is enough room between the motor plate and the back of the servo, but there's some material for that servo mount in the way. So I had to disassemble the front of the chassis, pull that servo mount out, and then I clearanced all of the plastic that was behind the servo. So just cut that all out, smoothed it as much as possible, and now the motor sits in there properly. Before, it was touching that plastic enough that I think that it would have shifted the motor up a little bit and kind of messed with my gear mesh. So went through, made sure that it was properly sitting there and not going to cause any issues. Now that 540XL motor uses a five millimeter pinion shaft. Now in preparation for this challenge, I went on a main and I bought basically every size pinion that ProTech makes from 12 tooth to 20 something tooth, just to give me the full range that I can adjust this. I went first with an 18 tooth pinion. I also swapped out the stock spur gear from the 45 tooth to the 39 tooth. Those are the two options of spur gears that you have for the TRX transmission. I also installed the TRX slipper lockout just to make sure that power was transmitting through. I'll take the risk of damaging anything rather than losing power by that slipper, you know, slowly loosening up over time. I'd rather push the th power through and risk parts breaking elsewhere because hopefully I can fix them at that point. Then I took and just set the VXL 8S in the vehicle. I haven't mounted it yet. I'm gonna come up with a 3D printed design to mount it because right now it's just kind of, it's not clean. In the end, I actually just Velcro strapped it in to go make my runs. Not exactly what I would call technical. But this week, Matt and I were limiting our tests to 3S. Now, normally the VXL 8S system is made from 4S to 8S. If you actually just pull the connector out of the Traxxas plug, you can just pull it out of both sides and then just turn it into a single connector set. Pretty easy setup with those Traxxas plugs. Or you can make yourself a little hoop adapter. I think that I'm going to go with a single battery this whole time though, rather than trying to run dual packs. So going to a single connector setup is gonna be easiest for me. And finally, you can see that the tires and wheels that we have on here are different as well. These are the Proline Pomona wheels, I believe, and the Reaction tires. Now these are the belted Proline drag tires and all of the tires that are on this vehicle were used. I got these from a coworker, Dan. He is a drag racer and these are pretty well used up. They're actually starting to check on the sides kind of in some of these areas, that's where the reaction tires wear out over time. So these will get changed out at some time, whether it's to all new reactions or something different, but we'll get to that later. Now, my first tests with this were at night and it was dark and it was in front of my house, not ideal at all for test situations. And I have to admit uh, that it was not a 
inspiring run. I tried driving it up and down the street. A couple, I had just barely speed. It was lifting tires and bicycling. It was bad. I was really nervous that this car was going to be awfully hard to control, but I recharged the battery, decided that I was gonna take it out, and I took it out on the road that I tested on previously. It's not too far from where I live, and it's just, it's an easier road. No curbs, but there is grass on either side. I don't love that just because California is so dry anyway. But took it out to that road, decided to try and open it up. All right, so we're out here. First test on, br well, first kind of official test on brushless. Uh, I did one the other night. It was dark out. It didn't want to go straight. I'm nervous now to fully test it. I've got a charged battery. We've got the telemetry link on the Traxxas app hooked up. And with the VXL 8S system in there, you get a lot more telemetry than you did on the brush setup. So we've got... Uh, motor RPM, miles per hour now, voltage of the battery, and temps. So we're gonna find out. I'm gonna hit record on the Traxxas app and we're gonna try driving this thing. So wish me luck. Top speed set at zero. Okay, I feel like it's just canting really hard to one side. I feel like that is a, a definite holdback. Uh, my top speed on that run was 35 though, and I'm at maybe half throttle max. It's still a super big handful to, to uh, but we hit 42 on that run. It's leaning hard to the driver's side, which is the side I have the ESC on, and that's a big, heavy ESC. So I feel like I need to work on balance, and then I need to work on, um, I think, you know what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put a bunch of preload in the shocks, try and stiffen up the suspension. We're gonna try one more time, and then I'm gonna move on to another plan. All right, test run number three. So squirrely. I just cannot keep it going in a straight line. I don't know. This road isn't that smooth, um, but I can't feel. I can't help but feel like my balance and my shocks uh, need some work. I think I'm going to go back and do some tuning on both of those things before I uh, before I try too much else. I might just try and drive quick and see if I can find a slightly more suitable road to do one last test on before I I throw that out. So. Let's go find a second location. First couple runs, again, I'm just, I'm concerned, I'm worried. Uh, it's not going straight. It's really just trying to drive itself all over it, and it's starting to, it was really kind of like torquing over to one side. I think specifically the driver's side really badly. So at this time, my thought is that I removed the portals and I changed the gears and the axles. So I'm going to see more torque twists, but this was just a lot more than I expected in general. Um, and it, it started to concern me. So while I was at my test site, I decided to just wing a bunch of preload into it, try and tighten up the suspension so that at least it wouldn't be so noticeable. I tried first with just counteracting it and only putting it in one side. That was too much, didn't work out. So I did both sides. It was okay, but not necessarily life changing. And uh, again, no confidence was being, you know, instilled in me after these runs. I was thinking maybe that this road is just a little too rough to keep this vehicle running smoothly down the path. So I decided I'm gonna run back to the house, pick up a new battery for the camera, and then go find a better, more smooth location. I found one that was, again, super close to my house. New road. Much smoother. I've also gone into the Traxxas dashboard on the app and turned my steering percentage down to 18%. So almost nothing, but hopefully that allows me to correct a little bit more accurately while driving. But this is a nice wide open road, curbs on both sides, and the surface is so much better. So. We've reset the uh, top speed. I'm gonna hit record on this app. Let's see what run number four looks like. Oh 
wow, it already feels so much better. That road must have sucked. I literally can't U-turn in this road. My steering's so far turned down. I have no power. What I do? I bet I came unplugged. No. Yeah, everything came unplugged. Okay. Oh, it only says 11. Well, something ain't right. Way better. Bad start. Try it again. Car coming. So far our top speed is 31. So at this time, we've got a speed in the 40s. I believe 42 was my top speed. So it's like, oh, okay, we're, we're getting there. You know, we add the extra cell to go to 4S. Maybe we can start pushing up there, but still not feeling great about where we're at. And at that point, I kind of started to realize like, maybe I understand why my steering is so bad as well. Oh, I've been running with locked diffs. The Traxxas remote obviously has a big toggle switch on the top for the differentials. At some point during transit, I must have just bumped it and I was doing all of those tests in locked differential mode. Simple flip of that switch and now it's a totally different car. We're gonna start over, stop the recording, test five, save. All right, resetting, this will be test six. Unlock differentials this time, finally, duh. Full speed, we had full throttle that time. Getting the car out of harm's way, we're gonna check speed. All right, let's see what this says. I'm anxious. Uh, oh my God. I'm probably overlaying this in the video, but, ah, come on. 54. Wow, 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 wow. 54 already. Th that's 3S LiPo only. And honestly, it was so stable that time. I can't believe it this whole time it was just because I was running with locked diffs. Oh, I was so nervous. Oh, I feel so much better now. Oh, this is so good. So good. Okay, um, oh, I'm so excited. Easily gonna hit 63. Easily gonna hit 63. Okay, we're gonna do another run. Um, my voltage is at 11.6, so we're already falling down in voltage on the battery. Um, but we're gonna hit it once more time, one more time anyway. Yes. We did a repeat of 54 back to back. So I'm already feeling way better about where we're sitting, but now is the time to start doing some other modifications to start getting this thing maybe just more refined and more ideal for what we're trying to do. First of all, we've obviously got this thing way lower already now that we've removed the portals, but 
We haven't done anything to the suspension. This is still just the regular off-road suspension, but with no portals and smaller tires. So we've got all of this travel, which that is not appropriate for a speed car. This type of car doesn't need very much suspension travel. So that is going to be my next order of business. I just went to the hobby shop and picked up some fuel tubing and I'm going to take all of these shocks apart and limit them so that we get this car way down here. But this is gonna really change the car up. And also while I was at RC Country, I couldn't help it, but I decided to pick up some different wheels and tires. Currently, I think that these drag tires look pretty mean on this thing, especially once it's lowered down. I think they look good, but I also don't think they look very G-Wagon-y. So I think we're gonna step up our bling game, big white letter, flashy wheels. We're aiming for those three mile per hour bonus points at this point. The matte black wheels that Matt's running, I don't think that's gonna get us there. Plus, you can't help but notice that all of his tires are glued the same. You can't vote for someone that the tread's going the wrong way on half the truck. Come on. It's the details, guys. <laughs> so by the time you see this thing next week, again, expect a much more aggressive look because those big flashy wheels and this slammed suspension are gonna make some big visual changes. Now next week, we're going to be able to go to 4S power. I'm not sure if I'll jump right to 4S or if I'll try and tune this setup in a little bit more on 3S first. I've got room to go to a bigger pinion. I'm gonna make sure that I keep monitoring the motor temperatures and I wanted to keep that motor in a torque range that was you know, a little bit better for it, being that this is a kind of a big heavy car. I don't wanna just, I don't wanna smoke that motor. I'm gonna work with a few more of these setup things before we start really diving into the aerodynamics. One of the other things that I wanna start thinking about for next week is what kind of drag wing we're gonna put on the back of this. Because obviously that low profile wing off the back to you know smooth out the air coming off the tail is needed. We should put a nice message to Matt on it. So whoever can come up with the best message to have printed on that wing, I'll uh, pin your comment and give you a digital high five. So put your suggestions as well in the comments below. But thanks as always for watching. These challenges are so much fun. And this one has, is already up there, might be my favorite one already. Make sure and catch the live takeovers that we do on Wednesday evenings as well, it's 6 p.m. Pacific time. Matt and I come on, we do live, we talk about this challenge as well as whatever else is new. But those are a lot of fun. Again, 6 p.m. on the Pacific side, and you can Google whatever time that is in whatever part of the world you live in. We'll see you next Wednesday for week three. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.